Uh, I don't want to hit it against it. I think I might have to maybe look at a hit from another person. Oh, what? Oh, what's the matter? You've been silent for a while? Out of the ideas already? Come on. Is that really all you can do? It's pointless. I've had enough. <gasps> oh, yeah. <laughs> Lucky number four means skipping it four times, apparently. The testimony. You're giving up? Give up? Why would I do that? Well, then get, let, get back to cracking my argument. It's your troll. Why should I even bother? Hey, you can't just ignore me now. Your argument is completely pointless. What exactly are you trying to show? I've had enough of letting myself get provoked by you. Ooh. Well, how about I make my accusation now? And not feed the troll. Are you serious? I told you the case is solid against the defendant. That's still solid. <laughs> And that's exactly my problem with your argument. It proves absolutely nothing. Just because it's technically possible doesn't mean it's true. You just wanted to prove poke me so that I would fail to dis disprove you or, or prove my case right there. No. So you're admitting that you can't prove your case? I'm admitting that your testimony sucks. Perhaps, but that is only true for your pointless argument. It seems like Kitcher is trying to prevent me from hearing my suspect's real testimony. I could have tried to keep fighting against it, but that'd be pointless. That wasn't the deal. The deal was to call my suspect to come to the stand and cross-examine him, with only one chance. I have yet to make use of that chance. Your role is over. Sh shut up. Someone's gee mad. Jeez, you mad, bro? Hmm, I'm not sure what to do over there. His argument did shock the Richard. Of course it did. It's exactly the same he's been s thing he's been saying throughout the whole trial. And of course, I can't disprove dis dis it just like that. That's why I wanted to call the suspect first. And this kind of reminder of the facts has nothing to do with it. It's no real argument. I knew that something was up with this testimony. You are a really tough one after all. Have your way then. I did what I could. Thank you for finally letting me get to the point. Well, I hope you have to at least have basis for whatever characterization we're gonna make. The, ju the justification is quite simple. It's just another explanation for the lock through. While I can't directly prove what is the truth, I have found yet another possibility. Also, that's what, what all of this was about. I see why the argument was poor here. Indeed. Unless the person himself will convince me that they are innocent, I will allow, I'm allowed to present it. For that argument, it did in no way deny this possibility or you. Well, the judge can decide whether to believe your nonsense then. Very well, I am intrigued about this other possibility. It's a quite simple trick, Your Honor. I'll explain it. However, first I'd like the suspect to take the stand. <gasps> this is it. Well, that was it. It's... It's... Me... A fay. Phoenix writes. I was right all along. I've said it. There's no turning back now. Whether I can accept the truth, whether I can accept the truth, it's all up to me now. <laughs> Silence! Order in the courtroom! I'm sorry, Mrs. Frey. I'm in serious tone now because you did a serious accusation. What did you just say? That can't be right. I'm being serious, Your Honor. I'm accusing Phoenix Wright. But how does that work? Phoenix, stop hiding and get your ass on the stand. Told you she'd snap to me. Baby. Mrs. Ferry, I will not allow this nonsense. And I won't allow not your nonsense. Very well, allow me to explain. The murderer pulled a very elaborate scheme on us here. You've apparently gone crazy. Objection for rule. I propose the possibility that Mr. Wright had the victim's key with him on the night of the murder. <laughs> I actually joked about that, but that's real? Actually, yeah, that's my theory. All along, and it seems it's right. I'm Mr. Wright. Not the killer. That's impossible. What would that explain? And why Miss Wright of all people, anyway? It's quite simple. Something really suspicious happened during that night. This, I, I'll go in and call the police. You stay here and protect the corpse. This was my first complaint. Why would he do that? The murderer could have still been around, yet he left me alone near the corpse? No normal person would just leave a woman behind a, at a fresh crime scene like that. I would. <laughs> Unless he knew that there was absolutely no danger for me, or he simply didn't care. It continues. Phoenix stayed away for 35 minutes in total. That simply isn't acceptable. And what is his ex excuse? This is apparently an auto service area for my cell phone, so I had to drive all the way to town. First of all, how did he even know that? <laughs> he never even tried to make a call from there, so he immediately ran off. Plus, it only takes 10 minutes to reach the town. Wow. Where he'd obviously get a signal. Even if he did it, he should just have alternately driven to Barry's house. In fact, it's not that far-fetched to assume that he'd get a signal again earlier. So how does that call justify 35 minutes absence in total? 
that should have taken 20 to 25 minutes at best. There's a huge gap there. That I, you're right. It sounded suspicious. Yeah, I was suspecting that too. And that's the important part. Phoenix was the one who insisted on examining the corpse. I was the one who asked him whether he found something. However, if he already had the key with him, he could have easily pretended to find the key in Larry's pocket. That's what I said. I was joking about it though, but oh, holy crap, it's real. Well, let's take a look, closer look at the corpse. We shouldn't really disturb the crime scene. No, I'm the murderer, Mia. That's what I said. I already said I'd do everything to find the truth behind this. And I'm going to put the key inside. Found something? Doesn't seem like it. Wait, wait, what's this? Huh? A key. And that's when you act in it when you didn't find his wristwatch either. A simple sign of hand. Nothing more, nothing less. But your sleight of hand has failed you here. But what? It's true that after the light went out, nobody could have locked the door and returned the key. This is, however, only true for one all but one person. Felix Wright could have locked the door during his suspicious mur absence during the murder. And when he came back, he could have returned the key into the pocket while examining the corpse. <gasps> this is it. You're gonna applaud for me. <laughs> I can read your applauds whenever they come. You do realize how absurd that is, right? Gets Mr. Wright on the stand at once. Mr. Wright, you're going down. Papa. Thought you could fool me, huh? I have no clue what you are talking about, Mia. I have no idea what's wrong with you. Well, you are not dating anymore. But if this is a joke, you're really taking it a bit too far. This is a murder case. I'm dead serious. So that's what you're really thinking of me? That I just murdered my friend? Huh, so hobo man. Just reminder of, you know, because your silly hypothesis causes quite a silly contradictions that are impossible to explain. We're really doing this? You're having me testify now? Sorry. Fine, Mia. I'm disappointed. You know I'm innocent. What is this? Well, uh, okay, Mr. Wright. Please testify. Ah, nostalgia. It's certainly been a while since my last testimony. Though back then you were defending me, not accusing me of murder. If that's really worthy of your career, however, I have no clue what the hell you're thinking. Well, he had a, a different sprite with a un disappointed look. Anyways, seriously. How can one be so obsessed with this case to accuse one of their own friends? Are you really my friend? You're a pupil. Mr. Wright, I'd like to hear your testimony. What do you have to say about what I pointed out? Fine then. What are you hiding? Riddle me this. Okay, seriously? Accusing me is the worst joke ever. Don't you remember? I was with you that evening. Even when the lights went out, I was still by your side. Don't tell me you forgot. And there was nothing that would suggest the use of an indirect murder weapon in this case. Actually there was! When I got the bad ending, I had the cage with dry ice in it and this explains the ice. If we're gonna super e present here, this is this would be it. It's true that it'd take a little longer to call the police. Bad luck. And I, I was, and I never was in possession of that key before I found it in Larry's pocket. I assure you, liar. Even with the key, it had been impossible for me to kill him in that towel when the lights went out. So can you stop this already? Nope. I'm sorry, but those excuses won't stop at me. I'm already almost figured out how you did it. Phoenix, I have to know. That is my duty as your former mentor. Oh, he's not my pupil anymore. Did he really do this? And if yes, why? Anyway, this testimony is indeed rather solid, but I did expect this. I've already thought that far. But for this testimony, I'll need more than one piece of evidence. Yes, I should present multiple pieces of evidence on one statement. It's risky, because you mustn't present too much evidence at once, but it's the only way sometimes. Not too, mi not too few pieces, not too many. A risky technique with many possibilities. With this, I'll crack the seemingly perfect testimony to prove my next point of reasoning. All that's left after that is to figure out the actual trick. <laughs> Mrs. Frey, are you going to cross-examine this testimony? Duh, well, of course she is. Haven't you learned anything today, judgy? Well, I always see these completely perfect testimonies, and they always convince me. And this one has pretty solid arguments, perfect ones you could say. No, your honor. Don't be fooled, he's bluffing, and I'll show you how. He's played poker before. Begin the cross-examination. Your little poker face. Riddle me this. Okay, seriously? Accusing me is the worst jerk ever. Well, you gotta admit, it was pretty funny. <laughs> Why so defensive all of a sudden? Well, this is pretty random accusation. Wouldn't you agree? I didn't think that... 
prosecutor over there would be able to make you that paranoid. What do you guys have to say about the keys then? Care to explain? Keys anyone? What's there to explain? You based it solely on the fact that I was the one to check the corpse. Well, yeah. Let's not forget about your other suspicious actions, like leaving me there alone. Look, I'm sorry. I couldn't, couldn't think clearly. I think about that, right? That's not good enough. Huh. I'm not sure what to think of this. So it looks like the judge isn't thinking clearly either. Please go on for not cool witness. <laughs> Don't you remember? I was with you that evening. Well, not for like 30 minutes. Not the whole time. Well, the relevant time was certainly covered. Not really. Didn't you even consider this in the slightest when you accused me? After all, even when the lights went out, I was still by your side. Don't tell me you forgot. Actually, you're right about that. <laughs> There's nothing you can to ask here. You yourself are the witness to confirm this. I was without any room for doubt with you when the lights in the room went out. Well, well, that is certainly true. There's a chance that he didn't actually die that time. Ooh. We rushed there immediately to discover his corpse, didn't we? Who is cross-examining whom here? <laughs> you were the one who immediately confirmed his death. So I couldn't have killed him then. And there is nothing that would suggest the use of an indirect murder weapon in this case. The dry ice! Or is there? Objection? I like your objection. Hey, I'm not sure if you're still aware of this, but figuring that is your job. Well then, obvious trick question. Can you prove the errors one? Um, um, okay. Of course, I can. Come on, time to finish this. <laughs> okay then, prove to us how this indirect record would have worked. Can I super present right now? Here's the cage first, and then here's the business report. We'll have just one other question for you. You are still sane, right? Because it looks like your intelligence has now officially left the building. No, come back! I need it! Come back! But your indirect method, don't you see how it could have worked? Here's an indirect penalty for you. That was really direct, your honor. That was anything but indirect. <laughs> what? Oh, I have to super present that. It's true to me that it took a little longer to make the call to the police. Bad luck. Well, you know what? It's not. A little? It took 15 more minutes than it should have. Traffic jams, okay? After midnight in that far off area? Yeah. Ooh, he just objected. Don't under underestimate how packed the streets into the city usually are. There are weird creepers out there with all kinds of cars. However, would you really have needed to drive the whole way just to be able to make a call? It's what happened. Accept it. I won't. And I never was in possession of that key before I found it in Larry's pocket, I assure you. I don't believe you at all. Unless it, exa it happened exactly as I described, with you feigning your discovery of the key. I still don't get how that that make me the murderer too. I cannot read today. <laughs> I don't know how you did it, but I know one thing for sure. Some lo someone locked that room at some point. That the defendant claimed he never locked the door, leaving only the key that was with the victim. And if it was really in the victim's pocket, we would face an impossible situation. Using logic, the only explanation is that some sort of trickery made us assume that the key was there. That's cold, loveless logic. Are you really intending to take the trust your client thing that far? Uh oh. Uh. <laughs> Come on. Yes, I'm taking it this far. Oh, come on, really? You're willing to trust his claim more than me? Go on with it. Even with the key, it'd have been impossible for me to kill him in that tower when the lights went on. You have dry ice in the question. What if he... <laughs> I couldn't have killed him beforehand since we have... have since we saw him arrive alive, I couldn't have been the one to accuse him when the lights went out because I was still next to you. Finally, I couldn't have killed him the 35 I needed to call the police because he's already dead. Unless he had a murder partner. Ack. I can't argue against that logic, at least not at the moment. Mr. Wright? It's still interesting to see that you have still that habit of in always interrupting people. Well, old habits die hard, and courtrooms are always reminiscent of those old times. <laughs> That's definitely not funny at the moment. I'm convinced now, but that doesn't help me figure out how he did it. Maybe I should clear up another matter first before focusing on the most obvious problem. That bluff, I should take care of that flawed suggestion first. And I'm quite sure I have the evidence to do so. Well, there's still a problem left after that. Alright, let's go ahead and say that there is a way to prove that there was an indirect, indirect murder weapon with dry ice and the report of dry ice. Whoops. There we go. 
and then we're gonna add the attorney's badge. Object here. Nicely worded. I'll, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. What are you talking about? Fine. I guess I have to explain then. This so-called indirect murder method. Well, aren't we in trouble now? Seems like she got it. Please remember the cage which we was found at the crime scene. It must have been something to do with the trick. The question is, what? The answer lies in the fact that it was closed when it was found. Obviously, a cage must have been used to store something inside. And whatever was inside the cage managed to get out without the culprit's help, leaving no trace behind. Because if he let it out himself, there would be, have been no reason to leave the cage at the crime scene. <sighs> whatever was in the cage managed to get out while the cage was closed. There is only one thing that could have been stored in the cage to have some sort of effect. Something that got out of the closed cage? Your Honor, please take a look at the business report. The thing in question is mentioned right there. Dry ice! <laughs> Actually, I knew this because I, because Luke at me, because what's dry ice? Because I accused Luke at me of this, but it was Phoenix who actually used it. To put it simply, frozen CO2. Oh, I see. You're gonna ask what CO2 is it is, isn't it? <laughs> what? <laughs> what is CO2? Carbon dioxide. Let's just say you're in a completely sealed room. You slowly consume the oxygen in the air and turn it into carbon dioxide. It'd take a while, but that's why you'd eventually suffocate in such a room. But wasn't the window open? Ah, I think I get it now. What did we breathe out, I see. Please note the fact that it's frozen. It's a frozen state. Will directly turn into a gaseous state at room temperature. It's the only thing that could have escaped the cage without leaving any trace. Plus it could have caused the victim, the candle, to go out and make the victim suffocate. Oh, oh, oh. oh. In short, it's an indirect murder method. You can leave it in the room and it do the job. The fact that Larry fell out of the room window can be explained by him trying to get some fresh air. Aha! Uh -huh. But he fell unconscious before he f could fully open it and fell out of the window after that. So how does that sound to you? Oh boy. Thanks. Thanks for that. Cool trick, bro. Two things though. First, what exactly does this have to do with the key trick you suggested earlier? If you died that way, Larry would have had the key already with him inside the room, right? I suggest you could argue that someone locked him up in there. Ooh. Yeah, in that case, it hadn't been had Phoenix, right? But he was with you before he saw any lights anyway. And the second most important point? Why exactly am I being suspected again? This dry ice. Shouldn't you accuse someone who actually had the sufficient amount? True. So shouldn't you rather suspect the CEO of Coke Company? Well, I already did that. It didn't, pretty, it didn't work out really good. Because I've never had any of that stuff. And anyone could have pulled that dry ice trap trick. Well, Miles Edgeworth was on his way to the coal company that night. What you just said is completely true. This does not indict you as a killer. At this moment, then again, that was your, exactly your intention, wasn't it? Ah. Now how do you mean that? He's not smiling anymore. The cage contained dry ice to suffocate the victim to death. That's what you wanted everyone to think, right? All I can say about that is, nice bluff, poker man. Oh man, oh he's not smiling either. However, that trick was never actually used in this case. Objection! Oh, <laughs> Hold your horses, seems like it's my turn again. So first of all, full penalty. All right, so now you suddenly throw that dry ice business on the trash yard again or what? But at this point, you can't just do that. The cage is clear evidence of that trick. No. But all I required the culprit to do was to place a crime a cage at the crime scene. Really? But there is no other reason to do that now, is there? It's a bluff. The only explanation for the cage would be dry ice and the culprit knew it. There, there, there. That's not how logic works. We're left with two options here. Can you prove that the cage was a bluff? Oh, my bad. You have to prove it, otherwise the journey ends right there. I can prove it. There is a way. Or to prove that dry ice wasn't used to kill the victim. It's definitely there. Well, um, you could only get one shot, apparently. Seriously, you're still choosing to guess over giving up? Fine. Prove that the cage wasn't used as a dry, some sort of dry ice trap. That's because of the autopsy part, isn't it? Yes. Well, hold on. Let me check this again. Proves that the, dry, uh, the cage wasn't used as some sort of dry ice trap. I'm having it... I'm gonna assume it's this because it's none of this. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm presenting. <laughs> Please take a look at the autopsy report again. Oh, come on now. That doesn't have anything to do with Mr. Hamazama. 
Would you be so kind as to remember your own, your own words from a while ago? The maid did it. She poisoned his food or something. Well, that actually would explain the locked room if the poison took effect there, but... Sure. Because he just happened to go into a locked room and happened to fall out the window. Anyway, just in case you want to try to, to accuse the maid of something like that. It had been mentioned in here, just reminding. In short, forensics are naturally capable of detecting this sort of poisoning. Oh yeah, they can detect um, CO2 in the body if it's there. But it's not in this report, is there? Unless... It's not the most updated report? The point is, CO2 would have left a similar trace if he inhaled so much of it. Abnormal amounts of CO2 would have been found in the victim's lung and blood. And that is bad. <laughs> not so fast. Don't think you're the only one who did his research here. It's true that you'd find traces of someone who actually suffocates from it. But the victim cause of death was the fall. If it doesn't kill you, it'd leave your body again after a while. Well... In this theory, Mr. Butts fell unconscious from the amounts of CO2 right after opening the window. He'd have died instantly a few seconds after that. It'd still have been in his body. So your, your little report's a lie again. Is that what the autopsy report says? He died instantly? When did you receive that report again? I'm afraid it's not the most recent version. Are you serious? Yes. Yes. So you're lying then. <laughs> you just... You just revealed the truth. I'm sorry, but this new version documents quite nicely that he could have lived for a few more... Oh, that was a good sniff. I'm sorry, but you won't get me like that again. Take a look at what you just stated earlier. I'm going to ask this once and only once. Is that your most recent version of your in possession? Yeah, sure, no worries. This one's the real deal. No more surprises ahead, really. And then he just said it's not the most recent version. I'm terribly sorry. But with that statement, you just you have revoked the right to present more versions. <gasps> the report you have there is illegal evidence which cannot be accepted by the court. Now you're taking all the fun out of this. Objection of state. Which means this version is still the most recent, and it's clearly stating that the victim died instantly. This disproves any theory in involving dry ice as a method to suffocate the victim. Haha, <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's no sound this time. So let me get this straight. You denied the explanation you came up with. Leaving you with no other option but to accept that the defendant did it after all. Well, yeah. I mean, wrong. I proved one thing though. That this case is nothing more than a bluff planted by the real criminal. And taking this in addition with the written challenge, it's obvious that someone tried to frame Mr. Admi. Which means both Mr. Admi and the defendant can't be the culprit. What? Too bad you can't prove a thing regarding that. There would have been no reason for Mr. Berg to leave a cage at the crime scene. Who knows? Maybe this is all part of his plan. Such a plan would be way too risky. There was a chance that nobody would have guessed that far. No, it was more like an insurance, just in case someone gave the case some actual thought. Come to think of it, it was Phoenix who pointed out the cage to me in the first place. Actually, yeah. And he also reminded me of it several times, trying to make me solve that problem. I forget what that was. Anyway, the cage was a bluff to distract from the real issue. Maybe it was also there to provide a satisfying conclusion for me, but it simply doesn't work. Do you seriously believe I could pull such a giant bluff? Yes, because you're a poker person. You're an ex-attorney and a poker player. <laughs> and you're also a close friend of Larry. He even told me that, that after you left at Larry's house, he knew about the affair. Baseless claim, stop it already. Stop accusing me of the truth, I don't like it. You can stop denying it already. You have one thing left to explain. I guess I could have returned the key, but I couldn't have entered the room. My alibi is perfect. You were observing the, the window together with me, weren't you? I knew something was wrong there. Back to my normal voice. I knew it was coming. His final line of, line of, final line of defense. Yes, that is the final issue I have to explain. Regarding that, mind giving testimony detailing why exactly your alibi is perfect. Now, isn't that obvious enough? But if you're insisting, I might as well. Have your fun. I'll lean back and watch this. Lean back. Perfect alibi. I've been with you from around 11.38 to now. Larry arrived at the church at around 11.48. Heck, I was already with you when he left his house at around 11.40. During the one hour we waited, I did not go away once, as you should know. Given the, the no indirect murder method was used, no time period in which I could have killed him exists. Actually, there still is that time period. This is what I'd call a guarantee of my innocence. Therefore, I'm not guilty of this crime. Happy? He's not even smiling anymore. This is certainly the tricky part. Wait, I had this idea earlier. But how did it go again? I don't know what you're talking about. Well, uh, um, Mr. Frank, you can't use yourself, Mr. Wright can be the culprit. 
Well, well, well. One of you two is going to fail epically, but who's it gonna be, I wonder? Says the one who has nothing useful to add anymore. <laughs> anyway, this is established Mr. Right and Richard. I object to that. I knew it. That's a quick, Your Honor. There is still one quest examination left, and it's the one that we have to decide over victory and defeat. But it's perfect. Not. Hey, Judgey Poo, don't worry now. What did you call me? This is the ultimate clash of fates, the climax. So we need appropriate odds. You mean like an ultimate, yeah, penalty? Pardon? I thought you were the one questioning the point of this. That was indeed my opinion. Very well, you may perform your clash examination with appropriate odds. It's not very appropriate, that's not fair. Well, I don't really have much health anyways. What in the holy Magatama? Your, your honor, that is just ridiculous. I demand an actual chance. Well, I'm in mercy mode, so I have a lot of chances. <laughs> you know, that's a killer's laugh. What's the matter, Mia? Can't do it without some bluffs. Aren't you the exact aren't those exactly the methods you said I used the ones you never approved of? He's making a point there. Don't sink down on his level. Yours is already low enough. Thanks for that. Mr. Frey, you only get this one trash, no compromises. Understood, Your Honor. Stop. Why, why are you guys both laughing? Too bad there's no way to actually break such a perfect alibi with just one shot, is there? It's the perfect form of defense. You should know that, Mia. Are your weapons really powerful enough to break through this? Why are you two ganging up on me? From what I could estimate from today, no way in hell. Okay, maybe in hell. Oops, was that a hint? What do you mean, like, um, that one trial? <laughs> um, one hell of a tournament. I'd like to begin the cross examination. I won't rest until I know how you did this, Phoenix. I'll explode the flaw in your alibi. I gotta sneeze. I didn't expect you to rest. Feel free to go all out with the one chance you have. Yeah, not smiling anymore, are you? Alright. And this is where we're gonna stop before I get more sick. And we're gonna join you guys in this confrontation of the true killer in the next episode. See you guys next time.